Mr. Grinch. Oh, it's a really <laughs> are you. You're as cuddly as a cactus. You're as wait, no, wait. You're as spiny as you're as spiny as a cactus or Don't ask me how to that so. You're as spiny as a cactus, you're as cuddly as a new. That's not cuddly at all. What if it's an electric What if you like electric I think that's the point. Stink, stink, stump. Bang. Good afternoon, good evening, good night, good morning. It's a type of news. I'm Dutch Pyramid. Did you have a white flag over your head? I do. Dutch Caribbean? <laughs> yeah, I wore that jacket just for that. Okay, you go ahead. Tell me who you are. I had a little trouble with it. Bruce Robinson. For the last time! So as we told you guys, uh, we are transitioning. So this indeed will be our final episode. And we wish that, you know, we could speak on a better topic for our going away episode, but with the headlines riddled with bullshit. Yeah, we decided that our last topic should be something that will impact future generations, i.e. the education system. And the state that it's in, it took generations. It's, it's not like this has just happened. It's not like, you know, this has cropped up in the last few years, or the few years before that. It's been years in the making of us getting to this point. People who are being taught in the system are not being properly supported. People who are teaching in the system are not being properly supported. And it begs the question. Maybe the problem is the system? And not just the system, but our country has a history of laying everything at the foot or at the feet of the minister. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know if I'd agree with that. Yeah? I mean, yes, to a certain degree, but at the same time... Stevie Wonder saw this coming. Yeah. You can criticize the minister for his personal failings as a minister. Yeah. But you I also, can. And I you will. can lay the system. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't know. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. I'm blaming the minister for not doing what he had to do to but try removed? to defuse the situation. Oh, yes. And, um... Because that but, meeting that he, they were invited to, they told him to leave. <laughs> yeah, well, listen. It, again, they like said, I said... You take your ass. You, the system itself. And right? We have had several ministers. In fact, it's been the most highly revolving dual ministry that we've had in our country mm -hmm. with, with so many ministers coming and going and this has been a minister that's lasted the longest in quite some time and I mean his record as far as as minister goes has not been stellar but he's hung in there so it begs the question are we going to now start looking underneath the hood and start looking at some of the permanent secretaries because they're <laughs> There are civil servants who have been within this industry, in this ministry, for years. Haven't mm -hmm. seen ministers come and go. And yet, the public doesn't get to hear too much from them, nor really see much of them. And I think that if we're going to find the root cause of this system malfunction, we have to first hold the minister accountable for not holding his civil servants accountable, and then we need to hold everybody accountable because our children are suffering. Mm -hmm. How much children are outside, are out of school now? Because it's, not, it's not even just about the children. It's the children and the parents that have to deal with them. I, today, before, before we start, I sat down and started filming, I went around and I asked a few people, young parents, old parents, regardless. One lady said, my son got to school and then called me and said, Mom, I have to come home. One lady said, oh, I put my daughter on the bus. Only for her to get off and have to walk all the way back because the bus driver, you know, the bus driver said, oh, no school today. Hmm. Ain't that something? How about that? 
Well, the parents in in a large percentile do support the teacher's actions, but there are also obviously parents on the other side that don't. But regardless, for so teachers to people got the kids, do people got the kids yeah. at work with them today. Yeah, and for know. teachers to do a drastic move like this, it shows you that they are fed up. They are. They're fed up with what they have to deal with. And we as a community haven't been listening hard enough and we haven't been putting our paddle to the metal as far as trying to solve these issues. Uh, a lot of people do bring up teacher starting wage. And I, I hear that it is quite nice. Yeah, it's not bad for only working <laughs> 200 out of the 365 days of the year. But... I also know from speaking to teachers personally, the amount of crap that they have to go through, especially with this generation coming up, as they all said to me, not all, but you know, generally speaking, that this has been one of the worst <laughs> generations they've had to deal with within the classroom. And really, it's, it's really a system where you get what you get, <laughs> and you have to just teach them. You know what I mean? It isn't like, oh, well, I, I can't really put up with this, this class of students, so I, I have to leave. No, it's like, you, you know, they have to stick it out through thick and through thin, through, through good students, through bad students. And <laughs> it's been a lot of sticking out for them. <laughs> I mean, I, I hear some of these stories, I'm like, some of these kids... Need an ass open? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, Jesus. Like, I remember when I was growing up, if a, teacher, if a teacher was, was uh, being pestered by a child, or if a teacher was, was even threatened by a child, physically or, or verbally, that the classroom would sort that child out. Because I remember we would be in there, we'd be like, oh man, don't talk to Miss Warren's one like that. You know, she, she's just trying to teach the class, you know, shut up, babe, you take your side. She's dumb, hey, shut up. You know, like we used to, the students used to deal with these unruly teachers. That was a different time. Now, it's like students versus teachers. <laughs> and sometimes, I hate to say it, but student and parent versus teacher. So, it's nice to see the PTA of West Pembroke standing with the teacher buddy on this. Because a lot of times there have been cases where a child is backed up by a, a, a parent that is blatantly looking past their terrible behavior. And the teacher just kind of takes it full. If the grades are low, the teacher takes it full. Attendance is low, the teacher takes it full. Where's the community coming? You know, we spend $80 million a year paying our teachers. We. Spend eighty million dollars a year paying our teachers, but yet they're still practicing school supplies for our children. The rich break down there. No, that's just teacher salary. That's not including the other hundred million dollars that they go to the education ministry. And if I remember correctly, didn't the um they increase their budget as well this year? Hmm. Mm hmm. So. Why are teachers buying their own supplies? Now, this, 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 is what, this is what I need to understand. I need to understand why are the teachers going to... Because technically speaking, it is their union right to have a sick day. So technically speaking, the teachers haven't done anything wrong. It's just maybe there's a disease that specifically affects teachers. Yeah. And it's been well, it is a disease that affects teachers. Stress. It's, yeah, it's called stress. <laughs> yeah, stress. Well, that affects all of us, really. Yeah, but I mean, honestly, dealing with a classroom with, what, 10 to 20... I used to teach. That was all right. Well, how long did you do it for? Oh, a couple months. Yeah, some of these guys teach it for years, 10 years. Gets so tiring. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I'll give you that. Yeah, it did. <laughs> After, like, six years of that, you're like, hey, maybe I need to find a different vocation. You know what I mean? Like, honestly. Hmm. But we need to find out exactly what the grievances are on both sides. Because on one hand, you've got the parents that are like, all right, so because of you, my kid's not in school today. And I need to figure out, I have to come up with a contingency to take care of him, her, whatever. And the teachers are like, our needs aren't being met. So you've got the parents on one side. You've got the teachers on the other side. And I'm sure there's some, some crisscross in between. Like I'm sure there might be some teachers that disagree and some parents that agree with the teachers. Yeah. You know, there's going to be some crisscrosses in between. Course, but please. the minister 
What were his attempts to defuse the situation? Uh, well, the letter that went out. Uh, you mean the letter the, that they kicked him out over, or the, the other one? Because the letter went out uh, demanding, you know, sick notes from the teachers, and that was sent out by the civil servant. And the minister asked for that to be done away with. So it it showed I, me that's that. A nice but again, it's, it's the fact that the letter set out without the minister's approval. A, a, a letter from the ministry was sent, sent out, sent without, out the approval. without the minister's approval. So let that just marinate for a second as to who is wrangling this shit. You know what I mean? Like, we are so in the dark when it comes to ministry inner workings in this country. We don't know much. We don't know anything, apparently. All we know right now is that a bunch of kids are at school and at the uh, work with their parents because the teacher's cold and sick. And again, if we don't know the ministry workings like that, right, it's very hard for us to piece together exactly what the teacher's issues are because what, the, what is reported on isn't necessarily the crux of the issue. You know what I mean? Like, just because you read a Royal Gazette article does not mean that that is the crux of the issue. And I feel like with the teachers taking a drastic action like this, because the teachers union is not a union of that sort of hammer, heavy-handed tactic. You well, know teachers I mean? are usually very resilient. Teachers yeah. are usually very, like, I mean, they deal with crap from our kids all day, every yeah. day, so, you know. They're not a union that would do a a sickle like this lightly. It ha so it's like we, we need to really rally behind our teachers in this aspect. Yes, there could be better ways in which they could have achieved their goal, yes. Yeah. But when people have had enough, they've had enough. And this has been a system that has been failing our teachers and failing our children for eons. But, but the, prob the problem is, it's not about the teachers, it's not about the students, it's not about the parents. It's about the children. They're the ones that, and I'm sure all those kids are happy that they're... It's not about the students, it's not about the teachers. Not about did, the parents. did I say it's not about the students? Yeah. Did I say that? Yeah. So you mean it is about students? You know what I mean. Okay, have to make sure, because you know, we, we got people, they be, hey, ITTP says it's not about the students. <laughs> what a headline. That would be a great way for our last episode to go. Great headline. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, have to make sure. It's, it's the politician in me. <laughs> Gotta be correct. It's not about the teachers. Mm-hmm. Or the parents. I got that. Or the minister. Mm -hmm. It's about the children. The students. That's right. Absolutely right. Jackass. Um, right, yes. Because even though I guarantee you, 99.99% .99 of those kids are like, ah, extra long weekend. I ain't got nothing to do. No. You're not in school. Your parents probably don't have somebody to look over you. How old can a child stay home by themselves? What's the legal age for that? There is, I don't think it's supposed to leave a child home exactly. by themselves. Mm. But they, 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 not, uh, the parents can't take their kids to work now, can they? No. Mm. And I think... And that's something. It's, How about that? Yeah, and it's a ripple effect. Um, mm -hmm. And it comes down to, you know, a lot of talk has been spoken of an education authority and like the bta yeah well Why not? or like any other authority but i well, think it's i know miss laverne forever posted that ireland has an education educators uh, the education authority and again with an education authority it it sounds good in principle and i i have called for education authority myself but looking at how the ministry is run, and these are supposed to be experts, but you have folks acting without the consent of the minister. So it's, to me, makes me very wary of an authority. Now, I understand that it, on paper, yes, you, you take the politics out of, out of education, and I am all for that. But I think, but I think we need to be extremely everything. stringent with, with, if we do do an education authority, we need to be the most stringent with this authority. Like, it has we to be a, like, mm. it has to be like, 
you know, like really like telescope, hundred degree, hundred measuring glass on that on that. This is not exactly what we need, though. Yeah. So then, what what would be the steps in to take to getting into that, Mister Member of the Upper House? Well, first of all, I think because we already have a, um, we already have lots of these. Miss Richards. Okay. Miss Kalma, yeah, just in, make that position empowered by an authority. Okay. So I, I mean, it would be a, it would be a transition, obviously, but if you have already have a, a, a person in that position, what is it? Um, commissioner of education. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Commissioner of education. Then you just that that commission of education job translate to head of an authority. That way, we can have a board set up and people are selected to be the best of the best as far as that educational vocation. And then from that point on, you can establish a actual rubric of grading, the actual curriculum of teaching that benefits the Bermuda population. Because I mean, the thing is, in every single party from the UBP to the PLP to the OBA, to back to the PLB, have always said education, 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 kids, 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 kids. But this is one situation that has been getting, this is a one bowl that has just been continuously dropped by every single party we've ever had. Well, you want to know why the BTA is so successful, it's continuity. And I feel exactly. like with education, you have a party that wins the election, and then for five or ten years, they implement what they feel is best for education, and no one's saying that their best interest is at heart, but they're not necessarily the best people for the job. And then you have a party that wins an next election that says, you know what, we want to prove that we know what's best, that we repeal everything that has been done, or we implement a totally new system. But in this specific case, the teachers have not been brought up to speed on the new grading rubric. The teachers have not been brought up to speed on the signature schools. They are simply in the dark. So again, this is a classic case of lack of continuity. You come in and you say, I know what's best for education and I'm gonna make all these changes, but the issue is you've left the teachers out of your changes. And as education minister, that is a monstrous blunder, and I think it's unforgivable, in my opinion. It's, you are leaving out the biggest part of your, of your governing body. Like, your teachers execute your curriculum. They mm -hmm. execute your grading. How can they not be brought up to speed on grading? And I heard that you had, what, one or two seminars or something like that, but if teachers are saying they're not brought up to speed, you need to make sure they are. You can't push forward with your plans and the teachers don't know what's happening. It just can't work. <laughs> it would be like if the teachers expected the students to just know something without them teaching it to them. Or if I say, you know what, I want to do rear side sobriety checks, and I, I put a date and then no police show up because they didn't know. But what kind of commissioner would I be if my body of, that I'm governing has no clue what I'm doing? I, I just, oh, I'm going to do it, and then nobody shows up. You, you, you <laughs> How does the education ministry make changes and the teachers are not in the loop? How does that work? Doesn't make sense to me. So you have a disconnect between the teachers and the ministry. You have a disconnect between the ministry, teachers, and the minister. How does this system not work? Somebody asks. Ooh, that might be a good place to start. Lack of connection. Lack of working relationship. Lack of dissemination of information. The fact that our government systems have such a hard time talking to each other that if you want to get a paper signed, you have to go to three different buildings might be a part of it. It might have well. an issue. It might be an issue with the fact that you have so many different bodies at work and there is no glue tying them together whatsoever and that you have a new minister in place whenever the wind blows that decides he knows what's best for education without any sort of evaluation or consultation with the teachers. But what, what is wrong with the industry, am I a permanent secretary making, what, $120? That's how much she makes? I heard they all make over $100. Oh, we're in the wrong business. Well, I have to, I have to, you know, you go online and see that for sure, don't quote me. But I'm sure it's all over $100. And with that comes anonymity. <laughs> you get to make decisions and nobody knows. Like, who, who is it? Someone tell me who it is. Who is the permanent secretary of education? Je ne sais pas. 
Can I join your game? Soccer blue? <laughs> yeah, I, just, I, I don't know. Now, some might say, bro, you just have to do your research. But no. The, the props, I learned this from the regiment. The royal for me, the regiment. The props of being at the bottom of the totem pole is that I don't have to look for information. Okay? It should be brought to me. If I'm a private soldier, I don't need to look for orders. They should be told to me. And then I should just go do it. So as a taxpaying citizen, I shouldn't have to look for who the education permanent secretary is. As a taxpaying citizen, we shouldn't have to look for anything that yeah. pertains to our government. It should be dropped right in front of bloop. But it's not. All I see is the honorable, the honorable band. And that is all I see. I don't see anybody else. I see my commissioner, the fabulous and intelligent, lovely Miss Calma Richards. Doctor. Hey. Doctor. Doctor. Calma Doctor. Richards. Let me put the respect she deserves. I see her, but the inner workings, I don't see that. And as a taxpaying citizen, how can you fix a system if you don't know the system? And sure, some folks only think you think, DA research, DA research. Okay, but I'm almost certain that. <laughs> it shouldn't be something I have to dig into. I don't. Know. I, I I feel that Bermudian throw around the whole do your research, do your research thing too often because they always say do your research for things that should be common knowledge, like yeah. something like this. It should if you research should consist of a basic Google search or like yeah. not even anything. It shouldn't require anything. Or rather than do your research, how about you just tell us? And we also How about love, that? we love flow words like signature schools. We love that. We love you know words that pop. Oh, signature schools. Everybody's got to choose. Oh, that sounds fancy. Does it? But then you start to realize. Well, I don't know a, a, a thing about signature schools. I did a little research on signature schools overseas, and apparently you need an even higher GPA than a regular school to get into a signature school overseas. But our children here are struggling to pass math and English. And we're implementing a signature school system, which the only reference point for that overseas is a school that requires a higher GPA than a regular school. So, not saying that anybody is not smart. What I am saying is that we have a system where children are struggling to learn the basics. They are struggling to learn math, science, and English. And struggling to pass it higher than a C. So, we have a signature school premise unless he's tweaking it completely, which means we definitely don't know what's going on. If we have a signature school premise, they would have to have higher grades than the regular grading system that we have now. But the only issue with that is that the entire grading system is also being tossed up in the air. And how compatible is that? With it seems like everything's getting tossed up in the air. Yeah. And I mean, you have to then do your research on your grading rubric and you find out it's used in some parts of America and some parts of the UK. But how translatable is that globally? You know, these are the questions we need to be asking. But who do we ask? The permanent secretary or the minister? No, we've been throwing everything at the minister, but uh, clear, clearly the minister is either inept to answer or not capable of answering because if he was, then maybe this whole situation wouldn't have gone. It's been solid in any house. Hmm? It's been solid in any house. Mm -hmm. Said he was going to give a statement, didn't mm -hmm. he? He had a bit of newspaper coverage, but mm -hmm. really. Hasn't said much. You mean that picture of him looking sad at that um, press conference? Yeah. It's, it's come down to we now need to realize that the education system is finally hitting its boiling point. Teachers are finally at the precipice. Okay, I'm sure they've been there before, but in our generation now, we realize they are at the precipice and we need to do something. We need to make something happen. We need to get more transparent. We need to get more proactive. And we need to get behind them. We, we got to do something. Even if we got to fundraise for school supplies or something, we just got to do something. And I know a lot of PTA is already well ahead of me on this. But as a community, we got to do something. <laughs> as a community, we got to be better. We, we, we can't just get caught up in buzzwords and whose political party is in power and, and who we want to run the country. We need to get caught up in what is the most efficient system for our people, what is the most efficient system to make sure that Bermudians are competitive. 
in the industries that are here, not just global, but are here. We need to make sure that our education system is catered for you to get a job in your country, not just competitive globally. Because a lot of times that is a very different, different ball game. <laughs> I mean, you got a lot of kids running away to get business degrees. You got a lot of kids running away to get different degrees. And when they come back, well, that's oversaturated. So how can we cater that education system to make sure our people are getting degrees that actually matter here in our country that are properly accredited? So there's a lot of questions to be tossed out. And, you know, hopefully that's what our permanent secretary is thinking about. Because I'm going to be throwing that word around a lot, permanent secretary. This, that. I respect the civil service, but, you know, what I won't do is deal with ineptitude. Sorry. Not with my kids. And I want to have kids. So but say so you got like kids at Vida Nova? Mm -hmm. Well, they're all my babies. Except for the gang banging ones. I have to pop down a little bit. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. little joke for the last episode. Come on now. Don't have me up. <laughs> Uh, it's been fun, huh? <laughs> Are you crying? I can't see past you. Oh, there you go. Yep. It's the last one. It's been two years and you ended on a corny ass joke like that. <laughs> Turn this camera off. Well, this, no, we're going to transition to hopes. the hopes. The, uh, the, the new host, we have some really good jokes. I mean, fantastic jokes. Better than what he's got. Huge. Fantastic. Fantastic. Turn yeah. uh, yeah. that camera off, girl. Thank you. This is the type of news. I'm Dutch Pyramid. One last time, that's Bruce Robinson. We love you guys!